We are continuing with the analysis of the book Flow by Mihaly Csikszentmihalyi, which is a classic in the positive psychology field, the 20 years old science of happiness, of the positive aspects of human experience. What we saw last time is that attention is your most valuable resource and attention is limited, so you need to kind of use it in a good way. And the question is, how? How should you use it? And the answer is, you should spend it in order to generate flow because flow is one of the most positive experiences that you can have so the question that we asked last time is how how can you do that and the answer is in this chapter chapter number three enjoyment and the quality of life where Mihaly Csikszentmihalyi analyzes the components of flow and distinguishes it from pleasure the first question is what is the difference between pleasure and enjoyment. If you think about uh, a circle which is order or your comfort zone, one, one could imagine order as the place where things happen as you expect them, as you act in it. And what's outside of it is chaos, which is the world where things don't go according to your expectations. And sometimes things bring you out in chaos and then some way or another you manage to go back, then this causes you pleasure. Also, circulating within order can give one pleasure. But this approach has some limitations. The reason is that um, pleasure doesn't lead to psychological growth. As you have seen, the circle of order remains the same. Now, enjoyment, on the other hand, is when you kind of move at the order at the border between order and chaos and as a result the circle of order expands so you basically grow as a person and that's what's called enjoyment pleasure is not always available sometimes you have to move out of order um, sometimes you have no choice but enjoyment is always available in the sense that you, it's your choice to basically stay at that edge between order and chaos. And so now we are going to look at the elements of enjoyment. If you get all those elements together, what you get in the end is flow. Let's look at them all one by one. So the first element is a chance of success. You need to be performing a task that is not impossible. So it has to be a task where you have a chance that it will succeed. And the reason is this. So imagine that on one hand you have your skill level and on the other hand you have your ambition. This is the line where your skill level matches your ambition. Below you are too skilled for whatever you are trying to do so you are bored. And above it you are anxious. And so this is the area where you can experience enjoyment and flow. The second characteristic of enjoyable experiences is concentration. And this basically means that all your limited attention is focused on the task at hand. Something else that is important is that the task has a clear goal. The task cannot be ambiguous for you to be able to enjoy it. It needs to have a clear goal. And then, extremely important, the activity that you do needs to provide you with immediate feedback. And this is a um, key component of flow in the sense that if you act and you don't know whether your actions are good or bad, you cannot become fully immersed. But if you get this immediate feedback, then you can like, calibrate as you go and the distance between you and your action kind of disappears and you can become really absorbed in it. Other characteristics are that you forget about everything else and this is the consequence of you being completely focused on what you're doing. Another aspect is a sense of control and this is the consequence of you being able to see what you're doing and acting kind of in a completely defined setting. Another consequence is that you forget about yourself and this can be also a very pleasurable experience. Another characteristic is that your sense of time changes. It's hard to precisely define what it is because some describe it as time becoming slower, but then 
when the experience is over, it, it feels as if that time has passed really quickly. For sure, what we can say is that the sense of time in general has changed. If, if you get many of all these components together, what you get is a kind of a very deep sense of enjoyment, which can be called flow. And the name flow even is derived from how people describe it. What's interesting about these activities is that they become intrinsically rewarding. Even if you started the activity with the idea of obtaining a certain extrinsic goal, if you experience flow often enough within those ex activities, you start pursuing them for their own sake. That's all about this chapter, about how, what the characteristics are of flow. In the next video, we are going to talk about other conditions of flow, environmental and personal, what kind of personality you need to have. So stay tuned, subscribe and click on the bell. And if everything goes well, we'll see you tomorrow. Bye.